All right, guys, time to set up our notebooks for our next lab, the second of the Labapalooza labs, which is called the Temperature Change Lab. Now, as a reminder, we, uh, we talk about four signs of a chemical reaction. And as we wrote about in our last lab, the first one is gas formation. And we already saw that one. The second one is precipitate formation. The third one is color change. And the fourth one is temperature change. As you can probably expect from the name of this lab, that's the one we're going to be observing today. Now today's reaction is a reaction between two chemicals that you can actually find very easily in the store. It's uh, water and calcium chloride. Now this guy, as you know, is called water. This guy Calcium chloride is also gone, goes by the brand name Damp Rid because it absorbs water or humidity out of the atmosphere. Some people keep it in their basements because the white crystals absorb humidity and keep things from getting all wrinkly and messed up. When these guys react together, what they create is uh, a little bit of hydrochloric acid plus some uh, calcium oxide and they release heat. So that makes this reaction an exothermic reaction. Exo means out, thermic means heat. That means that the heat that's stored in these chemicals gets released, causing the area around it to warm up. The opposite of exothermic is endothermic. Endothermic reactions pull in heat from the area around it, causing the environment to cool down. And actually, the reaction that we did previously, baking soda and vinegar, is endothermic. It causes the water to cool off. But today we're going to be focused on the exothermic reaction of calcium chloride and water. So we're going to start, as we always do, with the question, how do we maximize... the heat released by this reaction. Your hypothesis, as always, will be what you guess the answer to the question is. So I want you, between now and the beginning of the lab, to come up with an idea for how you think we might get the most heat possible out of this reaction. Now, it would be a good idea to wait until you see the demonstration of the lab which follows this uh, video, so that you know um, what's going to happen in the lab and have a better idea for what happens next. As with the last lab, we're going to have methods and materials. We're going to start with the materials. You're going to write down the materials that are used during the lab. And then comes the methods. You're going to write down the steps that you follow to complete the lab. And then it's time for the data table. Now in this data table, you're going to write down the amount of water, the amount of calcium chloride. You're going to write the starting temp.
and the highest temp, and then a thing that we call delta T. So delta in science and math means change. So delta T is the change in temperature. To get the delta T, you're gonna take the high temperature and subtract the starting temperature. So for example, if it started at 20 degrees and went to 30 degrees, this would be 10. <clears throat> All right guys, it is now time for our second lab of Lavapalooza. The, uh, the sign of a chemical reaction that we're gonna see with this lab is temperature change. In particular, we're gonna see uh, heat released, so we're gonna see the temperature go up. That makes this a exothermic reaction. If the temperature went down, it would be an endothermic reaction because it's taking in heat. Safety-wise, this lab, even more so than the last lab, is gonna require splash protection for your clothing and eye protection in the form of goggles. That's because one of the chemicals we're using for this lab, the calcium chloride, if it gets in your eyes, does cause a lot of irritation. Again, won't kill you, but definitely make your eyes turn red and uh, have to be flushed out with water. So we're gonna prevent that with our uh, goggles. Let's talk about the materials you're gonna be using during this lab. First of all, in order to measure temperature, you're gonna be using a thermometer. It comes in one of these uh, plastic sleeves. It measures in uh, degrees uh, Celsius. There's a red line that moves up and down. That's an alcohol uh, line, it's not mercury and uh, you're gonna wait until the line stops moving and read the uh, temperature there. So, thermometer, that's your first uh, supply. The second material you're gonna need is a small graduated cylinder. We're gonna use this to have the reaction take place with the thermometer inside so it can measure the, the uh, temperature change. Third is calcium chloride, which is a white flaky powder that you're gonna get a limited amount of but you can run as many trials as you can with the time and supplies that you are given. So that's calcium chloride. Third, you're gonna get a small graduated cylinder, a tiny one, that's gonna be used to measure your water. Now, getting water into here and having it not splash over is a little challenging. So to help you with that, you're gonna get a spray bottle full of water. This allows you to measure the amount exactly. Now there's gonna be a temptation to squeeze this bottle and spray other people. As you probably can predict, that's gonna get you in a lot of trouble. Not just trouble in the form of losing points for your team or having to sit out the lab, but uh, you will lose uh, health points in Classcraft and you'll be barred from all the remaining labs in Labapalooza. Uh, you'll still have to write a lab report, you just won't get to do the labs. So don't use a spray bottle to spray people, only to squeeze water into the uh, tiny graduated cylinder. So again, thermometer, small graduated cylinder, calcium chloride, tiny graduated cylinder, and spray bottle. And of course, water, but that'll be in the spray bottle. Now for this lab, you're also gonna need a uh, electronic balance or scale, which will be used to weigh your calcium chloride, and you'll need a weigh pan, W-E-I-G-H pan. That's how you're gonna measure the amount of calcium chloride that you use, is by weighing it. So let's walk through how this lab works. The first thing you're gonna do, as with the last lab, is decide how much calcium chloride you wanna use. You're gonna zero out the uh, scale. You're gonna add in your calcium chloride. You're gonna write down the weight of the calcium chloride. And you're gonna add it to the small graduated cylinder carefully. Now, calcium chloride attracts and reacts with water. That's why we're using it for this lab but that means it can sometimes get a little sticky just from the humidity in the air. Next, you're gonna decide how much water you wanna use, and you're gonna add that much water to the graduated cylinder, and you're gonna to wanna to measure it exactly. Now, to do the reaction, you start with the thermometer in the big graduated cylinder, then you add the water in, and you wanna stir and read the temperature, stir and read the temperature, you'll feel the bottom of the graduated cylinder get warm where the reaction is taking place. Your job is to write down the temperature that it started at 
and then the temperature that it gets to, the maximum temperature, the highest temperature. And then you're going to calculate delta T by subtracting those two. Now for cleanup, you take out your thermometer, you take this graduated cylinder and you pour it down the drain. You to use plenty of water to rinse the calcium chloride down the drain. Tap out any excess water and then repeat the experiment until you run out of time or until you run out of calcium chloride. So guys, there it is. Before tomorrow's lab, make sure you have set up the lab in your notebook, including the uh, notes, the question, the hypothesis, the materials and methods in the data section. Make sure you have filled in your hypothesis. Write down uh, your answer um, to what you predict will happen. And then uh, write down the materials using the list that was on the screen a few minutes ago. Make sure you bring all of this to class tomorrow, otherwise you will not be able to participate in the lab. You'll have to watch it and write about it without getting to do it.